Greetings. Our group is going to present our project on a review on image compression techniques, implementation and performance evaluation of Hoffman coding and block truncation coding for image compression in MATLAB. These are our group members, Gupta Mohil Amit Kumar, Harsh D. Makwana, Kale Atharvanna, and Kartavya Ravindra Kumar Makwana. Introduction. In the digital age, where the generation and consumption of images have become ubiquitous, the demand for efficient storage and transmission solution is ever-growing. Image compression stands at the forefront of addressing this challenge, serving as a key technology to reduce file sizes while preserving image quality. This paper explores the intricate landscape of image compression, focusing on two fundamental techniques. Lossless compression, exemplified by Huffman coding, and lossy compression with a spotlight on bl block truncation coding. Through a detailed examination of these techniques, we aim to provide insights into their mechanisms, applications, and trade offs, contributing to a deeper understanding of image compression in the era. Why image compression? Image compression is the process of reducing the size of an image file while retaining its visual quality. It involves various techniques to eliminate redundant or unnecessary data, thereby reducing the file size to save storage space or facilitate faster transmission over networks without significant loss on image quality. Data and information are not synonymous terms. Data is meant by which information is conveyed. Data compression aims to reduce the amount of data required to represent a given quality of information while preserving as much as information possible. Uncompressed images demand substantial memory in both RAM and storage media, posing challenges in terms of storage space and transfer times between devices. There are three types of redundancies that exist. First, coding redundancy. This occurs when a smaller number of code words are needed instead of larger symbols. Second, pixel redundancy, arising from correlated pixels in an image. Third, psychovisual redundancy, data ignored by the normal visual system. The goal of image compression is to minimize the number of bits representing the image, addressing these redundancies through a systematic approach. Hi, I am Karthar Makwana and I am going to be explaining about the various types of images. We'll explore each of the four distinct categories one at a time. First one is graphic interchange format, also known as GIF. GIF is a bit map image format, which means it uses a grid of pixels to represent images. It supports up to 256 colors making it suitable for simple graphics and animations. GIF uses a lossless compression algorithm, which means that the image quality is preserved even after compression. However, this also means that the file sizes can be relatively larger compared to other formats that uses lossy compression. Second one is portable network graphics, commonly known as PNG. PNG is a raster graphics file format that was designed as a successor to the GIF. PNG was developed to provide a patent-free alternative to GIF, which had certain limitations, especially regarding the use of patent compression algorithms. Like GIF, PNG uses a lossless compression method, preserving the original image quality without sacrificing details. This makes PNG suitable for images that require high quality and clarity. Third one is Joint Photographic Experts Group, commonly known as JPEG. JPEG is a widely used image compression standard in file format. The JPEG format is commonly used for storing and transmitting photographs on the internet, as well as for various other digital imaging applications. JPEG uses a lossy compression algorithm, which means that some information is discarded during the compression process to reduce the file size. While this results in smaller file sizes, it also means that there is some loss of image detail and quality, especially at higher compression levels. The last one, but not the least, is the JPEG 2000, also known as JP2. It is an image compression standard and file format that was developed as an improvement over the original JPEG standard. 
it was created by the joint photographic experts group committee to address some of the limitations of the traditional jpeg format jpeg 2000 supports both lossless and lossy compression providing flexibility for the users based on their specific needs lossless compression is suitable for applications where preserving every detail is essential while lossy compression can be used to achieve higher compression ratios with some loss of image quality now if you have uh, Now we have noticed uh, there are two terms, lossless compression techniques and lossy compression techniques would have been heard by you quite a few times. So let's see what they are actually. First, let's see what lossless compression techniques are. Lossless image compression refers to the process of reducing the size of an image file without losing any original image data. This technique employs algorithms that preserve all the image details during compression and decompression. It achieves compression by identifying and eliminating redundancies in the data without compromising image quality. By eliminating redundant information and storing only essential data, lossless compression ensures the exact making it valuable for applications uh, where maintaining image fidelity is crucial, such as medical imaging, professional photography, and archival purposes. Now let's see what lossy compression techniques. Are lossy image compression techniques are methods that reduce digital image file sizes by discarding less critical data imperceptible to the human eye. Unlike lossless compression, lossy techniques permanently remove certain image details using processes like quantization, discrete cosine transform, and subsampling. By sacrificing some image data, these methods achieve significantly smaller file sizes, ideal for web use, digital media distribution, and storage optimization. Hello, my name is Mohit Gupta and I am going to discuss about Huffman encoding for image compression. Huffman coding is widely employed technique in lossless image compression. Huffman, encoding, Huffman coding is based on variable length coding where different pixel values are assigned codes of varying lengths. Shorter codes are assigned to more frequent occurring pixel values while less frequent ones receive longer codes. First of all, uh, we start with creation of frequency table. For this, the compression process starts with creation of frequency table that records how often each pixel value appears in the image. This frequency table serves as the basis of for assigning Huffman code. Then Huffman tree creation takes place. It is constructed using the frequency information from the table. The tree is built in such a way that shorter codes are associated with more frequently occurring pixel values and longer codes with less frequent ones. Binary uh, sequence encoding. Each pixel value in the image is replaced with its corresponding Huffman code during compression. This replacement results in a more efficient representation of image with shorter binary sequence for commonly occurring pixel values. This leads to reduction in file size. The use of shorter codes for common pixel values contributes to reduction in overall file size of compressed image. This reduction is achieved by exploiting variable length coding principle and adapting to the frequency distribution of pixel values. Lossless compression. Huffman coding ensures lossless compression, meaning the original image data can be per perfectly reconstructed during decompression. The Huffman code Coded binary sequence is decoded to faithfully retrieve the initial pixel values of the image. Now let's look for some results obtained through Huffman encoding. For the first image, originally sized at 246 KB, the compressed version achieves a size of 188 KB, resulting in compression ratio of approximately 1.31. This suggests a relative efficient compression indicating that Huffman coding was able to significantly reduce the file size while preserving the essential information in the image. Now let's look at the another example. On the other end, the second image with initial size of 70.3 KB yielded a compressed file size of 67.7 KB, leading to compression ratio of approximately 1.04. 
although there is still reduction in size, compress, compression ratio is lower compared to first image. This implies that the second image may have had characteristics that were less amenable to compression using Hoffman coding. It is worth noting that certain types of images or data may not benefit as much as from this type of compression and other methods or algorithm may be more suitable. In conclusion, the effectiveness of Hoffman coding for image compression depends on the nature of image data. While it demonstrated notable compression for first image, the second image exhibited a more modest reduction in size. Further exploration and experimentation with alternative compression technique could be considered to op optimize the compression performance for different types of images. Now I would like to call Atharva for a letter. So thank you, Mohil. Uh, now we will starting with the block truncation coding. Block truncation coding is also known as BTC is an image compression technique. It is a lossy image compression technique which divides an image into blocks and encode each block using simple quantization method. In this compression method, first we divide an image into several blocks. The size of these blocks is usually in power of 2 like 4 cross 4, 8 cross 8 or 16 cross 16 etc. After that for each block we calculate the average or mean pixel value of that block. Once that is done, then we determine the threshold value of that block. Threshold value is that value which divides the pixels within the block into two sets. One set which contain pixel values greater than threshold value and other set which contain pixel values having less than or equal to threshold values. Generally, we consider the mean value of the block as the threshold value. After that, the pixel which are below threshold value are assigned threshold value uh, and pixel above the threshold value are assigned minimum or maximum value based on the binary decision. After that, we store the mean value, threshold value and the bit plane of the block in the compressed data. Now in order to get the compressed image, we need to, decode, to decode the encoded data. For that, we retrieve the mean value and the threshold value of each block from the compressed data. After that, using these values, we reconstruct pixel values for each block. Then we combine all re reconstructed blocks to recreate the compressed image. So we implemented all these processes and wrote a MATLAB code which performs this task. After that, we took two images and performed this compression technique once with the block size equal to 16 and then 8 and this was our observation. For the initial image of 110 KB, compression with the block size of 16 yielded a compressed size of 36 KB resulting in compression ratio of 3.05. Subsequently, using a block size of 8, the compressed image size increased to 51.5 KB and the compression ratio decreased to 2.13. The second image originally was 40.4 KB achieved a compression ratio of 3.77 with a block size of 16, producing a compressed size of 10.7 KB. However, using block size of 8 for same image led to compression size of 23.9 KB and the compression ratio was 1.69. So the blocks, we, here we can see that the block size defines the dimension of these non-overlapping uh, non -overlapping blocks. A larger block size means that more pixels are considered together, providing a higher level of special averaging with each block. As a result, larger block size often lead to more effective compression because the redundancy within the block is exploited more efficiently. However, the choice of blocks, block size involves a trade-off. While larger block size generally results in higher compression ratio, they may lead to loss of fine details in the image. On the other hand, smaller block size preserves more local detail but might not achieve a higher compression ratio. So this is about block truncation coding. So from this paper, we understood what is image compression, why it is required and how it is done. It also tells us which technique we should use according to our need. It also tells us how to maintain the balance between the compression without losing the necessary data. Thank you all for listening us. Thank you very much.